Hello and welcome to another Ruby Mountain Dialogue. Um, this time, Darren Carvel is not with us today. Instead, we are welcoming David Price Francis from North America, originally English, right, David? That is right, Colin. Good to be with you. Uh, David is the author of three books on energy, energy and relationships, energy fields, the human uh, energy field, and he's a really a, a fellow researcher that also has a passion in this area of the unseen side of life. Part of what we study in the Seven Trails of Ruby Mountain, the course online, he has his own course uh, called Energy Worlds, where he also really conducts people into a living experience of their own energy systems, other people's energy systems. And we've been in contact for a while and been meaning to have a, a one of these dialogues about the subject since it's a, it's a common passion. And uh, we thought um, as Darren's busy, this would be a great opportunity to, to, to do it. So welcome, David. Thank you, Colin. Looking forward to getting into some of this uh, energy sciences with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, it always spins around the fact of, you know, why is it relevant? Why is it important? Why do we do it? Like anything people do, you, the first thing you do is, or think is, why do you do this? And it seems to be something subtle and not that important necessarily, because as, you, as you're working and getting things sorted out at home this seems to be an extra side of life but the more you get into it the more it, seems, it starts becoming a central feature of your life yes i would say it's fundamental to living it's why uh working with the energy worlds it, well, it's why it's why i took the name energyworlds.com for our kind of website and modules and all of that stuff because it seems to me that the most crucial missing part of education at this time in world history is about energetics they knew far more about it in the past yeah and they gave far more credence to it in the past than we give to it today and uh, we use we use words to describe invisible properties all the time like you know we can say to someone well bring me a bucket of water and it's like yeah i can do that you say bring me a bucket of hope bring me a bucket of inspiration bring me a bucket of love these things are all invisible. They're energies. We we live and talk about energies every day. It's a fundamental part of our life. But somehow, we because we're we're like the goldfish because we're swimming in the water, we we often kind of miss it. It's amazing. It, it is amazing. It's it, it's a good analogy. The fish. If you've ever also if you've been in the water for some time, you go into the sea, you start kind of getting used to it, and then a cold current runs by you and you sort of remember that you're in the water if you see what i mean uh, oh, I do, it's, yes. the same, it's the same with energy like suddenly you go into a place or you meet somebody and you say oh i don't like the vibe of that person i didn't like his energy or i don't want to go back to that place it's got a funny vibe and people talk like this all the time you know they use words like the vibe of that place the energy the buzz all these these sort of terminologies to refer to this area of life but we're noticing it because it's distinctly good or distinctly bad but the fact is we're in it all the time aren't we so if we if we're not aware that we're in it all the time we can slowly sink down in the quality of the state of our aura the state of our the energies around us without realizing it yeah and, and every part of our human faculty is working with energy i saw a, a scientist really who was talking about how all illness comes down to our energetics yeah. not being sufficiently charged yeah. so as i listened to him it was very interesting he was talking about how every cell in our body is producing energy is producing kind of an electrical power or potency and our immune system um rises or falls in its capacity to be resilient according to the energy i even call that the electroimmune system like you know it's a step beyond the immune system but it all starts in the energetics and we say things like oh i'm feeling tired or i need to go to sleep i mean even the idea of what happens during sleep you know I, in researching it i found in toronto in the university that one report i read it said um, sleep is a hangover from the time when people used to have to hide 
from saber toothed tigers and the like. So they'd go up in a tree and they'd have to be completely quiet. I mean, snoring was off. <laughs> but but the reality is when we go to sleep, we we received an energy charge, which then keeps us alive for the other for the rest of the day. So yeah. the quality of charge we get is crucial. And um, this gets missed in the modern world. So I, I do think it's the leading edge um, going, looking at the past, coming into the present, going into the future. Um, you know, even the idea of medicine becoming much more energy based. And uh, I think just briefly, the, you know, so much of modern medicine is energy medicine, but they'll only use the stuff that comes from a plug in the wall. Yeah. So they're using ultrasounds, they're using, you know, laser surgery. This is all based in energy. But um, the more advanced form is just working with the universal energy, working through a human being that's universal energy and we're seeing a we're seeing a big boon in the interest in that at this time but if we look at history we'll see they've been into this for thousands of years yeah yeah and it, it raises a lot of questions of course because a person can live their whole life we all know people who live their whole life and they're just that it just doesn't seem important they, they they eat they sleep they enjoy some entertainment and do what people do other people seem to be very driven into the area it's quite curious as though they know that there's a relevance to it and uh, this is kind of what you and i have uh, been on a journey of I, I i think a similar length of time 30 plus years researching yep. and because because it's a it's a, it's something to do with the human then people in the past have also picked on, up on it and in fact sometimes in a, in more naturally so because they had less distractions and less electrical unnatural electrical interference so uh, for example when i came to brazil uh, a friend brought to my apartment i was on the um, actually it was a friend's apartment but it was quite high up it was like the 15th floor and she brought some uh, indians uh, native indians from brazil to visit to for me to talk to them because she knew i i had this appreciation of energy and how these types of people often have a closer connection into the natural energies of the land so she yeah. kind of wanted to arrange this meeting and uh, the first thing that was interesting was they were they hated and they were afraid actually of being up so high um they arrived and they, they live very much as they have for, for centuries these these particular three guys that came and they they it was not natural for them to be disconnected from the earth to be so high up suddenly and yes. th they didn't want to go to the balcony to look out because <laughs> it just seemed unnatural but one of the things that in, in, the, in the subsequent conversation, they said that they don't normally tell people this, but they said that it, once a month they go into the forest, there's a ceremony, like a purification ceremony. And if I remember right, there was three or four of them go into the forest for a couple of days because they said that one of our gods lives in the forest and will go there and have contact with it and offer it something. And then we come back to the village and share our experience with the people there. And that's a, I think that all around the world, there was this uh, deeper contact, this natural sensitivity and contact with forces in nature. And sometimes in the case of uh, certain things like what happened in Machu Picchu and Peru and certain places in Tibet, it wasn't just forces from nature, but people were detecting actual radiations out from the cosmos. Um, yeah. And in the absence of all the you know, radio signals and Wi-Fi and all the noise of the modern world, they, their sensitivity to the presence of things and the radiation of things was quite sharp. And, yeah. and, and they saw it as a very, very important and often healing, uplifting, uh, vital part of life.